All right, folks, so we've gathered all of our supplies and we have uh, mixed up our solutions and now we're ready to actually do our extractions. Um, so one of the solutions we mixed up was a solution that was a mixture of water and a little bit of dish soap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take um, our test tube that we previously uh, labeled as cells uh, and we're going to add about one to two milliliters of our soapy solution to this test tube. So I'm going to add one or two milliliters, in fact maybe even three. Now, so what we have now, this is just our soapy solution, but we need to put some cells in there. So what you're going to do next are about uh, three or four clean cotton swabs. So these are just cotton swabs or Q-tips that you might use um, in your bathroom, and I've, I've grabbed these. What we're going to do is we're going to collect um, cells from the inside lining of our cheeks, or what we call uh, buckle swabs. And so I'm going to take uh, these cotton swabs, and I'm just going to rub them on the inside lining of my cheek. I'm going to rub them uh, pretty vigorously. I want to rub quite hard because I want to collect a lot of skin cells from the inside of my cheek. So now on the end of the, the swab here, there are a bunch of skin cells, and I want to get those cells down here into my solution. So I'm going to take my cotton swab, and I'm going to swirl it around inside my solution to try to get as many of the cells to wash off that swab as I possibly can. And then I'm going to kind of squeeze the swab against the edge of the test tube to kind of squeeze out any liquid, and I'm going to do that again. Um, a couple more times. I want to get as many cells as I can possibly get inside my container because that, that is going to increase my likelihood of being able to extract some good DNA. So I'm going to do this a couple more times. And I'm going to swirl this around inside the solution. I'm going to really try to get as many cells to wash off this cotton swab into my soapy solution as I can. So there's another one. Do this one more time. Now these buckle swabs that I'm collecting, this is how we actually collect DNA uh, from suspects uh, who have to provide a DNA sample for us. We actually do a, a swab on the inside lining of the cheek. Again, it's called a buckle swab, B-U-C-C-A-L. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and dip this, this last swab into the test tube that I've labeled as cells. Squeeze the excess liquid off of the edge there. All right, so now I've deposited cells from the inside of my cheek into this liquid. And if you remember, this liquid is a mixture of, of water and soap. Now, why are we putting the cells in soap? Well, the reason for that is, if you remember, DNA is found within the cell. And specifically within the cell, there's a nucleus. And that's where we're going to find what we call the nuclear DNA. So what we're going to try to do is we're trying to extract or pull the nuclear DNA out of the nucleus, which is inside the cell. So what we have to do first is we have to dissolve the outer cell membrane. And then we also need to dissolve or eliminate the inner nuclear membrane. Uh, and the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane are actually made out of fats or lipids. Uh, and if you know anything about soaps, one of, the thing, one of the reasons we use soaps to wash our dishes and to wash our clothing is soaps are very good at dissolving uh, fats, oils, and things that get on our clothing or get on our hands or on our dishes. And so as we put the cells inside this test tube, that soap is slowly dissolving the cell membrane on the outside of the cell and then also dissolving the nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleus so that the DNA can then separate out and then dissolve within our liquid. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to go ahead and put ourselves into the solution that contains the soap and the water. All right, so that's step one. All right, folks, so uh, the next step in our extraction process is to add uh, to our test tube that contains our cells dissolved in the soapy water solution, uh, what we're going to add to that uh, test tube 
is uh, a few drops of this enzyme solution that we mixed up earlier. Remember this enzyme solution is basically uh, a small amount of meat tenderizer uh, that has been dissolved in some water. And, and to add the, the meat tenderizer or this enzyme, I'm going to use one of the micro tip pipettes. So one of the pipettes with the really small tip. Uh, what I want to do is I want to suck up and add to my test tube about eight drops. So I'm going to suck up some of the enzyme into my pipette and into my test tube labeled cells that's got my cells dissolved in the soapy water solution. I'm going to add about eight drops of the, the enzyme or the meat tenderizer. Now the meat tenderizer um, consists of what's called a protease enzyme, which is a, a protein dissolving enzyme. The way that it actually tenderizes meat is that the enzyme in meat tenderizer breaks down the linkages, the chains of proteins, and proteins are made out of uh, amino acids, or sorry, amino acids, which make up uh, meat, are proteins. And so if you add meat tenderizer to the surface of a steak, what it does is it kind of breaks down all the fibers that kind of hold the meat together, and so it makes it uh, not so tough. Um, when we add meat tenderizer or protease enzyme, again protein dissolving enzyme, to our test tube with our cells, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take the DNA and it's going to kind of unwind it and unbind it for us. Remember DNA is a really, really long chain molecule. Uh, in fact, if we were to take all of your chromosomes, all 46 chromosomes in your nucleus and unwind them all and then lay out the, the DNA chains, they would be extremely, extremely long. And so the way that the long chain DNA fits in the small space within the nucleus of your cells is that proteins kind of cause the DNA chains to kind of wind up and clump together. Kind of the way that spaghetti noodles have a tendency to clump up together on your plate. And so by adding the enzymes to our solution, what that's going to do is it's going to cause the DNA chromosomes to begin to kind of unwind and break apart, which is going to make it easier for us to actually extract them out. So that's the next step, is to add the protease enzyme. All right, folks, so uh, the last step was to add the protease enzyme to our solution. So we added that uh, to our solution. We mixed it by tapping the bottom of the test tube to mix it in there. And then uh, we needed to let it sit for about uh, two to four minutes. And so after we added the enzyme and we mixed it and then we let it sit for two to four minutes, we're ready to do our next step. Our next step is going to involve, again, one of these micro pipettes or these pipettes with the micro tip. What we're going to do is we're going to take our salt solution, which we mixed up earlier, and then we're going to add about eight drops of this saline or salt solution uh, to our mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and add about eight drops. Just want to add the, the salt solution. Again, we're going to, to gently mix it. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it back in my uh, test tube rack. And again, I want to let this sit for about uh, another two to four minutes. So that's the next step. All right, folks. Uh, so the next step uh, in our extraction process um, you know, we extract, we got our cells in our soapy solution, which dissolved the cell membranes and the nuclear membranes. Uh, we added our enzyme, which broke down the proteins. We added a little bit of salt, and then we let it incubate for a few minutes. And now we're ready to add um, our alcohol. So you remember, this is our rubbing alcohol. Uh, we've had it in the freezer uh, to make sure it's nice and freezer cold. Um, and then we're going to add. Um, about probably one to two milliliters of alcohol. Now we're going to be careful because we don't want to shoot the alcohol straight into the test tube because we actually don't want to mix the two layers. What we actually want to do is very carefully dribble the alcohol into the test tube so that the alcohol sits on top and doesn't actually mix with the layer uh, below that has our soapy solution and our cells in it. So what I'm going to do is when I actually add the alcohol, I'm actually going to tilt the test tube and hold it at about a 45 degree angle and then when I add the alcohol I'm going to let it dribble along the inside 
to form what we call a two-layer liquid. A two-layer liquid is what you see in your salad dressing, your Italian dressing, where you get kind of an oil and a vinegar layer. That's kind of what we're going to want to have here. So I'm going to very carefully uh, suck up some of my uh, rubbing alcohol into my plastic disposable transfer pipette. I'm going to tilt the test tube here to the side and I'm going to very carefully dribble the alcohol into my test tube. Again, I don't want the two layers to mix. I want them to sit separate. So I'm going to add, that's about one milliliter. I want to add about one more mill, milliliter of my freezer cold rubbing alcohol. Now, it's okay to keep the alcohol in the freezer. Again, it's not going to freeze because alcohol has a much lower freezing point than water does. So the alcohol is going to be really cold, but it's not actually going to be frozen like ice cubes. All right, if I can get my camera guy to come in really close, you can actually see there we have a two-layer liquid. You can see that there's two separate layers. And the alcohol layer is there on the top. And then in the bottom layer, that's where we have our soapy solution with our DNA dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and set this down in my test tube rack. I'm going to be very careful and put the, because we don't want to mix them, we're going to put my, my test tube in there and I'm going to let it sit for about four or five minutes. And I don't want to disturb it, I don't want to bump the table or mix it. And then what's going to happen is the cold alcohol actually causes the DNA, which is in solution, to precipitate out. It actually kind of uh, solidifies and turns into long strands of DNA that we're actually going to be able to uh, suck out of um, our test tube because actually the DNA is going to form right between those two layers. And so after we let this sit for about four or five minutes, we're going to take and we're going to use one of our pipettes and we're going to, we're going to suck out that small layer that has our DNA in it and we're going to transfer it to our small micro pipette. So we're going to let this sit for about four or five minutes. I'm going to turn the camera off and then turn it back on in another couple of minutes. All right, folks, so uh, we let our DNA um, uh, precipitate out of solution, and so we can actually uh, see our two-layer liquid. And normally the DNA, uh, most of it actually is going to sit right between the two layers, but we actually have a fairly large piece of DNA that's kind of floating in the bottom layer. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. I'm kind of holding, hoping if I hold it up to the light here that we're going to be able to see it a little bit better. If you look there, you can see a kind of a stringy substance kind of suspended in the test tube. If we look at the bottom of the test tube, if I can get the camera to focus in a little better here, uh, most of our DNA actually has settled down to the bottom. Uh, so now what we need to do is we actually need to, to suck that DNA out of solution and actually um, deposit it into our micro. Uh, pipette, or, or sorry, not a micro pipette, but our micro test tube. So I'm going to hand the camera off to my cameraman. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do that. All right, so um, our DNA, uh, after we added our alcohol and let it uh, sit for four or five minutes, is now um, precipitated out. So we get little teeny strands of DNA um, that are sitting right between the two layers, and then a lot of it actually has settled down to the bottom. And so now we need to suck that DNA out. And, and transfer it to one of our micro test tubes here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and have my, uh, my camera and kind of zoom in on the test tube a little bit. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to take the, the transfer pipette and the first thing you want to do before you put it in is you're actually going to squeeze it just a little bit. Just actually squeeze it first. We don't want to dip it in there and squeeze it because then we'll actually make air bubbles. We don't want any air bubbles. We actually want to squeeze it first and then when we let go of it it's going to suck up the materials we want. So we're going to go ahead and, and um, place our pipette in here. We squeezed it a little bit before we put it in the liquid. We're going to put it down, the tip of it down to the level where we need it to be, where our DNA is. And then we're going to suck up kind of that little bit of that middle layer. And then I'm going to transfer that liquid to my micro test tube. And then a lot of the DNA was found at the bottom of the test tube, so I'm going to again grab my large test tube 
And again, I'm going to try to suck up that small amount, uh, that very, 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 very bottom section that had a lot of our, our DNA that kind of settled down to the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and put that into my micro test tube. So now I've taken my DNA out of here and I've now transferred it into this uh, much smaller micro test tube and I can go ahead and cap it. And so now I, ha I have my DNA that's been extracted. Um, so in the crime lab, uh, our next step would be after we've extracted the DNA would to be to amplify it, which is to actually copy it so that then we could uh, develop a DNA profile uh, from the DNA that we have extracted. So um, when you're all said and done, at the end of the exercise, this is what you're going to get. You're going to have your DNA extracted and uh, collected and concentrated in the bottom of your micro test tube. So that's the DNA extraction exercise. I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. You can actually keep your extracted DNA and then you can make a clone of yourself at some future point if you want. So anyway, that's the extraction exercise.